Hey now family, it's Pastor Larry here. Listen, I am so excited that you decided to join our live. What I need you to do right now is there's a link right below. I want you to send it to at least five people. Let them know this service is about to start. You're about to get a power packed word and we're so excited about what God is doing in the year of the takeover. This is a year of execution. This is a year where we watch God put his super to all of our natural. So right now, go ahead once again, click the link, share the link, subscribe, like, do all that great stuff. Follow us on all of our social media at Now Church FL. Listen, let's go ahead and join service right now. I'll see you there. Listen, Pastor Charlie here with the Now Church. I am so excited to be coming to you with this midweek teaching. If you're taking notes, somebody write it down. God uses faith. I'm going to say a prayer, and then we're going to jump right into it. God uses faith. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to come before your people on this day, on this evening, whenever it is that they're watching it. Use me. Speak through me. Uh, use my mind. Use everything that I can today, this evening, to help individuals understand how powerful their faith is. I, I pray that this message changes some, somebody's life. It helps them understand how powerful their belief in you really is. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if you're, if you're taking notes right now, I need you to put in the chat, God uses faith. Go ahead and like, subscribe, share, let somebody know. Get the YouTube, get the Facebook right now, because the Now Church is about to teach us how God uses faith. Amen? So Hebrews 11.6, it's my foundational scripture. Write it down. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Let me tell you, the, the thing that I like to say about faith is that if it weren't for faith, I don't, I don't know where I would be. I mean, faith gets me through every single situation. Oftentimes, we limit ourselves to based on what we can do, based on our understanding, based on our education, based on our resources. And let me tell you, when you talk about having faith and trusting in God, it says very, very clearly in the scripture here in Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. We're right now on a series at the, at the Now Church that is entitled The Takeover. All year, if you come to the Now Church, all we're talking about is the takeover. And so what I want to help you understand is that your faith is a part of being a part of the takeover. You can't take anything over unless you have the faith of God running through your veins and everything in you. And so what I want to encourage you to do is continue to step out on faith, continue to understand how powerful your faith is. God can only use what is given to him by faith. Have you ever been trying to do something on your own and it just continues to not work? I mean, over and over and over. You're trying to do it and, and you're saying, I'm doing everything I know to do. I'm doing, I'm doing everything I was taught to do in school. I'm doing everything my family taught me to do. I'm, 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 I'm doing every, I'm staying, I'm, I'm coming early. I'm staying late. I'm doing everything humanly possible, and it's still not working. Let me tell you why. Because if you're not doing it by faith, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. The only way that you're going to begin to see and understand how powerful God is is to do it by faith. Faith, faith, think about it like this. Faith is currency in the kingdom. In this world system, you need money to do everything you need to do. If you're need, if you hungry, you need some money to go buy some food, amen? If you need gas in your car, you need some money to put some gas in your car. If, you, if you're trying to go to a ball game or if you're trying to take your kids to an amusement park, there has to be an exchange of money. I felt the Holy Spirit on that. But listen to me. If you're trying to get an exchange and you're trying to manifest something that grace has already made available for you, the only currency that's going to allow that exchange to take place is faith. Amen. Hebrews eleven six. 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. There's three things. There's three things that God cannot use when you're talking about faith. He cannot use doubt. The scripture I'm going to give you, because I, I don't want you to think it's just me talking to you. James 1, 6 through 7, it says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Somebody put that in the scripture. Stop doubting. Just like that. Stop doubting. I want you to put an exclamation mark. 
Because the one who doubts is like the wave in the sea, blown and tossed by the wind, the person that should not expect to receive anything from the Lord if you're constantly doubting. One of the things that bothers me is when I'm talking faith and somebody comes right behind me talking doubt. I, I can't stand that. And sometimes I have to check myself because I might get a little bit rude with you, but it's like, hey, listen, I don't have time to be talking about no doubt. Amen? Because all I'm trying to do is talk faith. There's been times that people that I love have said things, and, and I felt the doubt trying to creep in. And I said, hey, I love you, but stop talking, because if you keep talking, I might say something crazy back to you, because I'm believing faith right now. And you have to get to the point where you stop doubting, because God cannot use doubt. Number two, God cannot use prideful intentions. God cannot use prideful intentions. Proverbs 16, 5, it says, the Lord detests all the proud at heart. Be sure, be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. We may, as people, when I say we, we as people may not understand or know everybody's intention. You may be able to fool the pastor. You may be able to fool mom, dad, the teacher, your brother, your sister, your friend. You may be able to fool these people. You can, you can act like you love God. You can act like you got the right intentions. You can act like you love God's people. You can act like you're doing it for the right reasons. But if you're not, God notices that. He can't use that. You, you could say, hey, I love God's people, and I'm doing this by faith, and I'm going to continue to press in and do God's work. But if in your heart you, you, you're really doing it for, for pride and, and for your own goodwill, and, and you want the attention, God can't use that. So, I encourage you to check yourself when it comes to doubt and prideful intentions. Amen? Number three, he can't use unrepented sin. The scripture is Isaiah 59, 2. It says, but your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so he will not hear. One of the things that I've learned about sin is that God's grace is so good that God is always going to be with us. But what happens is when we find ourselves falling short, we tend to run away from God. And because we run away from God, we just continue to separate ourselves further and further and further away, thinking that God is not going to forgive us. God doesn't love us. Listen, let me tell you a secret. God sent his son Jesus down the cross for what you did yesterday, for the mistakes you're going to make today, and for the mistakes you're going to make tomorrow. And so all I need you to do is say, God, every single day, God, help keep me right today. Help keep me clean today. Help keep me holy and righteous today. Because I know without you, there's nothing, there's nothing that I could do. I know that I'm a mess without you. And all I'm trying to do is be the best believer that I can. I'm trying to love on people as much as I can. I'm trying to forgive as much as I can. I'm trying to walk by faith as much as I can. I'm trying to display the love of God as much as I can. And, and if I fall short, forgive me. And then you're covered. You don't have unrepentant sins. And that's all repentance is, is acknowledging that you can't do this on your own. If you keep those three things in mind, I'm not going to let doubt seep in. I'm not going to have pride in my heart. And I'm going to remind myself on a daily basis that I cannot do this without God. Then, yes, you qualify to walk by faith. And when I say walk by faith, that means God can start using your faith. Somebody put that in the chat. Say, God, use my faith. There's, there's one thing about I, I, I think about sometimes when I go somewhere with my kids and, and they're so excited and, and they, got, they got their little wallet out, especially the young ones. They got their little money out, their little wallet out. And we get to the register and they done picked out something that, let's say, it costs $50 and they pull out their little money. And it's like $1, $2. And to them, that's, that's enough to pay for it. They don't know the sacrifice and what it really takes to, to, to make that exchange take place. But all they know is that I'm with daddy, and if I put my money with his, I'm going to have enough. And so that's kind of how it works with faith when God is working with us. All you need to do is show up with confidence and say, that's what I want. I'm doing what I, I know. I did what I was supposed to do in school today, daddy. I was on time today. I had a good attitude today. You told me that if I did this, this, and this, then if I, when we came to this store, all I was going to have to do was put my money with yours, and it was going to work itself out. And I stand there with my little kids and I see them pull their money out and I see them put a dollar up on the counter or five dollars up on the counter for a ten dollar or a fifteen dollar or a twenty dollar toy and they don't even understand the exchange that I have to add with it but because of their faith I gladly 
add to it. And, 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 and that's, how God does, that's how God uses our faith. God says, they were a believer. They told somebody about me today. They were loving today to that person that, that was treating them bad. They, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't respond to the situation, but they responded based on what the word of God says. And when I get to the register and it's time to make the exchange, whatever they come up short, I'm going to add to it so they could get everything that their heart desires. And so when you talk about God using your faith, that's a, that's a real example of God using your faith. Let me tell you why, why your faith is key. Faith is the foundation to spiritual connection. Faith is the foundation to spiritual connection. Faith is the only currency that moves heaven. So when you talk about faith being the foundation, Hebrews 11 one says, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about we do not see, what we do not see. I was talking to somebody at church last week, and I was so excited. She was telling me about her new career and some things that were going on in her life. And she said, you know what, Pastor Charlie, I'm so excited because I just closed my first deal, and, and my goal is to get to $10,000 a month. I said, oh, that's amazing. I said, that's, I said but let me ask you this. I said, can, can you figure out a plan how to get to $10,000 a month? And if you see me talking about you, yeah, I'm talking about you. Can you figure out a plan how to get to $10,000 a month? And she said, oh, yeah, I, I just do this, this, and this, and then I make a couple more calls here, and I'll get to $10,000 a month. I said, well, that's a good plan, but that's not faith. She said, well, what do you mean? I said, because Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and about assurance about what we do not see. So if you can figure it out, that means you can see it. That means it's not faith. So what I need you to do is go back to the drawing board. I said, so if your goal is 10, why don't we make it 100? She said, oh, that scared me. I said, well, that's faith. So what I want you to do is go after the bigger Go after the better. Go after the more. Go after being the lender and not the borrower. Stop, stop limiting yourself and calling it faith and then being upset with God when you don't get it. God cannot use the doubt saying, well, I can't figure that out. Oh, God can't use that. Oh, God can't use the, well, I just want to get it so I, could, I could, so I could flex on everybody else. Nope, God can't use that. God can only use it when you say, hey, I'm totally surrendered, and I don't know how it's going to work out, but I just know that if I do what I'm supposed to do and I get to that counter with God and it's time to make that exchange, I know it's going to work itself out. That's the faith that God is talking about when he says, now faith is the confidence of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith serves as a foundation element in understanding and approaching God uh, approaching God, providing believers with the confidence and assurance. C.S. Lewis said, you can't know it, you could only believe it. You could only believe or not. Number two, you should face every challenge with faith. You should face every challenge with Faith, James 1, 2, and 3, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. You know that the testing of your faith, James 1 and 2, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. You sound crazy, Pastor Charlie. You want me to be happy when I'm going through something? Absolutely, because God is allowing your faith to get stronger and stronger and stronger. How many people can look back? Somebody put the hands up in the chat. You know I'm talking about the little hands when they go, when they go like that. Put the hands up in the chat. If you know that you've been through something, you could look back on it and you could remember seeing God's hand deliver you out of that situation and you still here. Somebody put that in the chat. We've all been there. We've all been in situations where we thought, it ain't no way I'm going to make it out this situation. I don't have enough money to eat. I don't have enough money to feed these kids. I don't know how these bills going to get paid. I don't know how this job is going to work out. I'm not qualified for it, but somehow it worked out. We've all been there, and God still delivered us. So why now are we doubting? Why now are we trying to figure it out on our own? Consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know 
that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Faith is faith. It, it doesn't exempt us from challenges, but, but through trials, the faith is tested and strengthened, leading us to persevere. Amen. Hardship often prepares us, prepares ordinary person for an extraordinary destiny. I'm going to say that again. Hardship often prepares ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. You know what I call that? That's a miracle. Whenever you take a, a, a natural something and a spiritual something gets on top of it, that's called a miracle. That's, that's the extraordinary. That's when you take a natural person and you, and you take a spiritual thing like faith and you put it on top of it, miracle is the only option. Amen? Somebody say, miracle is my only option. Miracle is my only option. Miracle is my only option because God uses my faith. Look at Joseph. Look at Daniel. Look at the three Hebrew boys. Go back and look at the message I taught a couple weeks ago when I talked about David and Goliath. And David said, I ain't worried about Goliath. I know Jesus. I know God. There's something bigger that's inside of me. I challenge everybody in here, no matter when you're watching this, I want you to look at every single challenge, problem, situation that you have, and I want you to tell that challenge or problem, my God is bigger than any situation that could ever come my way. So if I need more money, I'm going to figure it out. If they raise the prices, God going to raise my blessings. If they, if they increase what it's going to cost to get it, God's going to increase the money that's coming in. Whatever the challenge or situation may be, my God is bigger than all of that. Amen? Somebody say amen. Somebody shout amen in the chat for me. I'm telling you, you better share this out. God uses faith. Let somebody know. I'm, I'm allowing God to use my faith like never before because I believe that this is the year that we are, that I am going to take over every single situation and I'm not going to continue to allow this world to beat me down and tear me up. I am going to allow God to use my faith. Number three, your faith is, is the love language of God. Whoo, that's a good one. Your faith is the love language of God. John 20, 29. Look, I got to give you this scripture because I know you think that's, that's Pastor Charlie talking. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, yet believed. Jesus told his disciples, he said, because you saw me, you believed. But blessed are those who have seen me, have not seen me, I'm sorry, and yet they have believed. There, there, there was this book a while back, and it was a really good book, um, and they talked about the five love languages, and it, and, it, and it ran through the Christian church, and everybody was talking about the five love languages, and, and then couples were talking about, well, how do you like to be communicated with? What's, what's your love language? I like uh, 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 acts, of, acts of service or, or affection or or, or physical touch, and it's like these are. This is what gets me going as a spouse, right? This is how this is how I communicate with my spouse. Think about it like this: Your faith is God's love language, and so when you begin to talk by faith and walk by faith and act by faith and do by faith, God is up in heaven just squirming. So I can't wait to get to Him. I'm telling you this. I can't wait to get to him because I could see that it's faith talking right now. It's not. And, and, and the thing about faith that excites me, and, and I'm about to wrap it up here, but this is the thing about faith that excites me. All of heaven was created to obey the word of God. Listen to me. Stay with me. All of heaven was created to obey the word of God. That's, that's including, including the, the, the fallen archangels, which, which then became the devil, the demons, and all of that. They were created as angelic beings to obey the word of God. Now, stay with me. So when we speak faith and we're speaking the word of God, everything that God created, angelic beings, are, are commanded to obey the word of God, whether they want to or not. Angels don't have a choice, neither do the demons. When we begin to speak faith, nobody has a choice whether they want to obey or not because they were created to obey. We as humans have the choice to be obedient or disobedient, right? Right? 
And so what tends to happen is we think because we can be disobedient or obedient, we think that the spiritual realm also has a choice in obeying when the word of God is spoken. Let me tell you, when you as a believer speak the word of God by faith, all of the angelic forces and all of even the evil forces, they know, oh, that's the word of God being spoken. I have to line up. I have to obey. So if your body is going through something by faith, I speak healing over it, and I command it to line up at the cellular level based on what the word of God says. If my finances are going through something by faith, I speak that I am the lender and not the borrower, and God is going to give me the wisdom to get through any natural situation that I'm going through. If, if anything is going on based on this world that is contrary to what the word of God says, if you speak by faith, all spiritual forces have to obey what the Word of God says because that is God's love language. And when God gets excited and starts moving on your behalf, all of heaven has to, has to obey. It doesn't have a choice. It has to obey. And so what I encourage you to do is more than ever, start to pray by faith. Start to walk by faith. Start to live by faith because God is looking for individuals that he can use their faith in a new way and he can help get you somewhere that you could only dream of being because remember, if I could figure out how to get to 10000 a month, if I can figure out how to make it work, that's not faith. But if, if I can't figure it out and all I can do is trust God, I'm telling you, that's faith and it's going to work out. Now, is it going to always be comfortable? No. Does faith make it easy? No. Does faith, does faith make it where everybody is not going to hate on you? Absolutely not. Does faith, does faith make it where sometimes you, you're not going to question what's going on? No, because we're a spirit, soul, and body. We're natural. We're, we're going to sometimes think, what am I doing? And we have to remind ourselves that I am walking by faith. You know how many times I have to tell myself in the mirror, you are walking by faith. You better not talk like that, Charlie. You better not say that because you are walking by faith. Faith. I don't want to hear anything but faith come out of your mouth. I give myself a pep talk every single morning and tell myself, we're walking by faith today. I don't care how you feel. You're going to get up. We're going to go work out. You're going to get up early. You're going to pray. You're going to say some positive things. You're going to make positive confessions on your way to work. You're going to make positive confessions in the car. If somebody talk, call me talking crazy, I might not even say bye. I might just hang the phone up on you. But I am going to walk by faith because God uses faith. And so what I encourage you to do is tell yourself from this point moving forward, I want to be a vessel to be used by God. I want to be used by God like never before. God, you have free will to use my faith. You could do whatever you want with me because I trust you. I love you. And I know Everything is going to work itself out. Hey, listen, I hope you got something from tonight. I hope that, that, that you understand that your faith is the key, that your faith is, is the currency in the kingdom, that God wants to get everything to you and through you so you can continue being a blessing to this world. You were created for such a time as this. Seek ye first the kingdom and everything else shall be added because God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above through you in Jesus' name. I love you. Hey, listen, Pastor Charlie, the Now Church, like, share, subscribe, come fellowship with us. If you're in South Florida, I want to see your face. God uses faith. I love you. Hey guys, wow, what a powerful word we just received. I really hope you got something special out of the word. I want you to be able to apply that word to the remainder of your week. Listen, remember, this is the year of the takeover. We're watching God put his super in all of our natural. We're executing every area that God puts in front of us and we're gonna watch growth. We're gonna watch our lives flourish, our finances flourish. Just want you to be part of it. Listen, if you're not a part of a home church, 
And I know you've been watching online. I encourage you. We want you to be a part of our now family. So we want you to be able to come here physically so we can hug you, we can love on you, and we can share just life with you. Uh, so right now, go to nowchurchfl.com. You can see all of our events on there, different areas of ministry that you can get plugged in in any different areas of interest. We got our life groups. We got men's group, women's group, youth, everything available for you. Listen, like, subscribe, share. Go to all of our social media platforms at nowchurchfl. Uh, and we hope to see you soon, okay? I love you guys. God bless. Make sure you get a seed in the ground. If you're tithing, make sure you tithe. Make sure you put your seed afterwards. But listen, enjoy the rest of your week. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you.